name is Matthias Klein. I'm the Vice President of Strategic Growth and Innovation at McKesson. McKesson is a, a, the largest healthcare services company in the United States. So it's an enormous company with thousands of customers. Um, it's split into two distinct divisions. One is the pharmaceutical distribution division, and the other is the technology division, which I'm part of. Our technology division uh, has been recognized, I think, consistently as the number one healthcare IT company in the United States. Um, and uh, really what we're looking to do with, uh, with Apogee is to unlock innovation in healthcare, help transform the industry. We are seeing a big shift to um, value-based reimbursement from the traditional fee-for-service reimbursements. And with that shift comes a lot of complexity, comes a lot of change. And uh, you know, we believe McKesson is well positioned to help our customers, which are both payers and providers. There's a lot of um, unknowns, uncertainties, and folks are looking to McKesson as a leader in the industry, as a, you know, a, a stable and um, established company that people trust to be able to help advise them on the path forward to this kind of brave new world of, of value-based healthcare. This industry is so big. I mean, it's 20% of our GDP. It's enormous. And with innovation, we have the possibility of unlocking savings and efficiencies that we don't need to bend the cost curve. We can, we can create enormous value for the economy just by innovating in the spend that already exists. We're seeing firsthand the challenges of data interoperability within our enterprise. And uh, really what it comes down to is we have lots of different systems with different technology. Um, and so, you know, they don't, they're not made to work together. And we have some standards um, that are, are traditional standards like EDI or HL7 version 2. And those standards were really meant for point-to-point -point connections. Um, and so uh, we're kind of moving a little bit away from that because, you know, you know the kind of the Metcalfe's law of the network all connecting and there's just an enormous explosion of the number of connections. It's just not sustainable. And so what we would like to see happen is more of a services-based, API-based, reusable approach to interoperability between systems. And that's really where we're pushing um, a lot more aggressively. So with respect to FIRE, I think it's, it's, it's an approach that we are very much supportive of. Um, it is a little focused on clinical, which is uh, a good place uh, to start. I think they've started to introduce some concepts around administrative and financial as well, uh, which is really where our business unit is primarily focused. Other parts of McKesson are focused on the clinical problem. So I would kind of lay it out there that we don't view FIRE as the end state necessarily. I think for a certain set of use cases, it certainly is a, a, a great advance. In general, you know, RESTful, APIs are um, the approach that we think will work. And it doesn't need to be necessarily based on a standard where you're you know, getting the, the data sets totally um, uh, agreed to at the industry level, but rather just saying, listen, we have these reusable, published, you know, simple interfaces, and here's a developer portal. You can go in, you can understand what those APIs are all about. You can build your uh, test integrations and get going and do that in a much faster time frame than was possible in the past. One of the most interesting things about it is that it allows people to modernize and be interoperable without a massive re-engineering effort, which usually accompanies some type of enterprise strategy to bring systems together. Um, and so the ability to, to basically put this solution in place and then allow people to just plug into it and then rapidly create standard-based APIs based on fire, um, I think it's very interesting. And uh, we really want to enable our product teams to move faster. And so this is quite well aligned with that idea. You know, we have 4,000 hospitals as customers, hundreds of health insurance customers, and um, you know, we manage uh, indirectly um, 100 million plus lives. And so it's a big business, it's a scale business, lots of products. And um, we often have customers that will buy multiple products and they expect them to work together. You know, as simply as taking a plug and plugging it into a socket. And when we explain to them that, well, no, the integration is a project and we got to work together and it's going to be, you know, 12, 18 months to build these interfaces, uh, you know, customers, I think, are looking for something that's easier. They're looking for something that they can get going on faster because the pace of change that they're experiencing um, really demands that they move faster. And so what we're looking to do is to put these reusable APIs on all of our products and to engineer 
kind of that plug and play model so that folks who buy multiple of our products will know that McKesson's products work together. And that's an area where we think there's an opportunity to differentiate because the industry is just not there yet. The second initiative is kind of an industry initiative where we're um, one of many companies that are working together in this um, alliance called the Commonwealth Health Alliance. Um, and this alliance is all about uh, finding patient records across vendor systems, across geographies, and to have that capability built into the products. Part of the Commonwealth Health Alliance, we've got McKesson, Relay Health, Cerner, Athena Health, um, and a number of other leading companies like Meditech, and et cetera. Today, if you buy any of those vendors' products, you're going to experience a similar thing to what I described with regard to McKesson's internal problems around the products not being plug and play. But when you look at that on the industry level, that problem is compounded. And so the Commonwealth Health Alliance is a little bit more of a narrow use case than what we're trying to accomplish internally with our products. But that use case is focused around health information exchange and the ability to find patients across geographies, across vendors, and to do that in a way that's off the shelf. It's built into the products. You know that if you buy a product from one vendor that's part of the Commonwealth Health Alliance and you buy a product from another vendor, they're going to work together. There's not going to be a massive integration project, a ton of custom work to be done. It's going to be, hopefully, you know, if the vision is achieved, as easy as plugging a, a socket into a, uh, into a plug. I see Apogee as a, a group of, of innovators that are um, trying to take a, a technology that really has the opportunity to really simplify things and make them much easier and try to bring that capability to healthcare. Um, you know, I think that healthcare is a heavily regulated industry, so it is a challenge to, to drive innovation in healthcare. Um, and so I think finding a company like Apogee that we can partner with that can kind of bring that dynamic and help us kind of push the envelope a little bit, and we can have a nice partnership where we might say, hey, you know, the way our customers think, the way this industry moves, it's, it's not quite, you know, in the mold of, of maybe the, um, uh, you know, the, the startup model of Silicon Valley, but they do want to change. They have to change. The regulations have come around healthcare um, reform and, and Obamacare, and so the industry is reacting, and the industry needs solutions. And so I think kind of bringing that marriage of a very stable, uh, conservative company that really is the backbone of healthcare today. We do all of the kind of the blocking and tackling, really, you know, what many people might consider boring jobs, but critically important jobs, and bring kind of the innovation, the, the kind of the rapid iteration from a group like Apogee together. I think it's a really powerful combination.